Hello, my name is Matt Price. I'm a technical manager here at PI, and today I want to talk about ACS real-time C functions and the advantages and benefits they bring to PI-centric applications. PI is a company specializing in high-precision motion products that are used across a diverse array of applications and in markets. With the diverse array of applications and end markets that PI currently serves in the precision motion space, we've developed a number of differentiated products, technologies, and capability. With the advent of ACS Real-Time C, we can now leverage ACS features and functions and capability to enhance PI product offerings in a number of different specific applications, including fast multi-channel photonics alignment, FMPA, precision force control, and autofocus applications. When PI technical expertise is combined with ACS real-time C features and functions, the result is fast, precise, flexible, and very importantly, proprietary. ACS real-time C enhances PI motion solutions in a number of different ways. Perhaps first and foremost, it allows the combination of ACS features and functions with PI applications and motion technology expertise. By transferring PI, PI DNA into ACS controls, PI motion solutions provide PI proprietary algorithms leveraging ACS capability. These same algorithms can be accessed with easy function calls, protected on the controller, and developed in familiar IDEs like Visual Studio. In advance of hardware, these same libraries and algorithms can be accessed, used for development with application-specific tested parameter bounds, both with PI-specific developments and that same flexibility applied to PI customer use with their own proprietary algorithms. Here we're going to look at a few specific PI applications and our use of real-time C in those applications and what advantages it can bring with ACS. Yeah. So the first application where we want to talk about implementation of real-time C on a PI proprietary development is in fast multi-channel photonics alignment, FMPA for short, or what we call FMPA. Um, in these applications and the end market served by these applications, PI has been defining state-of-the-art in the recent past and beyond. Here, we've developed a number of novel motion system technologies, um, algorithms, and general capability that's now, for lack of a better world, leading, world leading state-of-the-art. And um, I mention this because there's a highly um, proprietary nature to these developments that have allowed us to um, enhance capability in some cases many orders of magnitude beyond what had been done and our IP in this case is highly um, concerning for us to be protected and real-time C uh, first and foremost brings um, this kind of proprietary prote protection with our libraries running on the controller um, exposing methods developed in these libraries um, to both the host side uh, while being executed on the controller and for direct execution on the controller. So these capabilities and algorithms, you can access them easily uh, without exposing the code. And this would apply to any general development um, that's been made using ACS real-time C where IP needs to be protected. And um, especially in our case with the developments around FMPA that have put us into a world leading position so quickly um, are of uh, direct concern. And so, uh, so that's number one. Otherwise, um, AC, FMPA has a number of different features that make uh, the implementation of real-time C particularly attractive. I thought it might be good to go over a bulk of those requirements and then speak to how real-time C uh, in our implementation has been particularly useful. So um, first uh, requirement of these general types of applications is to find peak coupling quickly. That's a part of the algorithms that have been developed to enhance throughput, especially in tools like the one you're seeing here um, with photonic circuits. Um, so, but in short, highly dynamic multi-axis coordinated motion is required of the type that ACS handles so well 
uh, through all their features that have been developed for coordinated motion. Um, as a part of that, intelligent, both intelligent and adaptive intelligence and motion path planning is important. As you look for this peak coupling signal on a figure of merit, the figure of merit uh, doesn't necessarily need to be an analog voltage, but in a conventional case, we'll have a power meter with an analog voltage, and that's the figure of merit signal to optimize on. And while we're running these fast um, motion paths, um, computationally, we have large uh, data array sets that need to uh, execute quickly computationally to determine uh, an optimized path, um, much like what you're seeing in the gradient search uh, at the bottom of the, this page. Uh, that computational intelligence has been historically um, difficult for execution outside of a real-time C um, on an ACS controllers. And now it's, uh, it's enhanced the ability of um, ACS controls to execute these kind of FMPA algorithms without being detrimental to the potential throughput, which uh, in our direct cases has been increased uh, for our customers by orders of magnitude, and in some cases uh, happen over a handful of seconds. Uh, with thousands of, uh, of data points being computationally um, computationally addressed um, through a number of different uh, methods uh, to determine the best way uh, for the motion to go to get you to peak coupling quickly. So um, this is really, I'll say, the core of FMPA um, as implemented here, not that FMPA, even in this real-time C, uh, it can be executed slowly for systems that can accommodate these uh, high frequency sort of rapid alignments for even slower systems. There's the, the functionality in these libraries to execute more slowly, but principally and fundamentally with the real-time C implementation, these computations, pathing, and capability on ACS allow the FMPA algorithms uh, developed at PI to run without uh, a detrimental impact either on the motion path planning or on the computational side for what's available being executed again on the controller with easy function calls on the host side um, through software that's developed for these tools. Um, so this is the first one and probably there's a common theme here that you'll see is that you require dynamic motion with signals that need to be optimized quickly that undergo some sort of computational or transformations um, quickly that makes real-time C particularly useful while protect protecting the IP, your IP that addresses those signals and motions together at the same time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So the next application we want to look at as we move from FMPA, as we move away from FMPA, is force control. And uh, what's perhaps interesting is that FMPA and force control have a commonality of application requirements in terms of features of both. And speaking precisely on that is that there's a figure of merit um, that you're trying to optimize on. The same can be said of force control, where there's a figure of merit you're trying to optimize on. In this case, typically it's force. Um, so to speak more on force control in that context, um, there's going to be a rapid synchronization of a force feedback signal with the motion that you want to react both very highly dynamically and very precisely. And it can come via repeated uh, force application steps where you're stepping down, applying a force momentarily and retracting, uh, or you're applying a force and holding in, in other processes, or um, you're uh, applying, retracting to some potential offset and uh, potentially holding. So uh, in terms of force applications, these are some common ones, whether that uh, force signal comes via an analog voltage a current or um, uh, external sensors or internal sensors potentially uh, via motor uh, encoder feedback. Um, they all require dynamic uh, dynamic synchronization with quick responsiveness on the applied motion. And uh, much like FMPA, real-time C gives that 
uh, ability uh, to do these rap rapid computations running deterministically time-wise on the controller as opposed to through the host side uh, via library that's existing there, and the flexibility to address these di different um, force application methods in a general way so a user can easily interface depending on the mode while remaining proprietary using all the experience that was developed via these different force applications to make that um, to make that library uh, with easy calls um, on the host side or on the control side. So this is really um, one of the advantages of real-time C being applied to force control is that you get this um, time-wise deterministic behavior with computational flexibility in the real-time C with uh, embedded functions that are developed via proprietary uh, internal developments to address all the cases that you handle in an intelligent way and uh, all running again with the advantages that ACS has through its features and functions that address force control through external or internal signals this way. So as we move from the force control into an autofocus, there's a number of similarities and I think almost an analog to force control via autofocus. You'll see in the previous slide, there's a single axis typically fixtured in force control above a substrate and applied with the direct drive stage uh, precisely and directly, um, high, highly dynamically uh, uh, for a device under test or that you wanna apply in terms of a workpiece. Now, instead of that force control, you're now maintaining through a signal um, uh, your relative working distance um, rapidly and precisely either in an analog kind of motion way uh, potentially tracking on an analog signal or you're preci providing precise steps or precise steps with offsets. So that um, this kind of highly dynamic uh, working with an externalized synchronized triggle, trigger um, is quite similar between um, between autofocus and force control. And the implementation of real-time C in a comparable fashion uh, to address the different methods that you might wanna apply, whether it's following a profile uh, map to a surface or it's um, making precise incremental steps, tracking or running uh, really on an analog signal, slave to an analog signal. Um, all of these apply in a comparable way to force control and in some cases potentially as, if not more precisely, um, via an autofocus system. And um, just like in force control, uh, with these precise dynamic direct drives, you'll have a similar case, much like what you're seeing here with a V308 um, fixtured above a sample, providing this highly precise, highly dynamic sort of motion to maintain focus tracking. Now. It's good to say here that a real-time C development to address these autofocus methods and techniques and signals, um, much like the force signals, uh, can be done in libraries in real-time C and executed time-wise deterministically with good computational flexibility with uh, real-time C on the controller without any uh, communication bus latency. Um, and also, um, What's especially advantageous to use uh, ACS controls for autofocuses. There's been a number of features developed likewise for this common application at ACS that uh, the real-time C can talk to and work with um, to provide this sort of extra layer of capability uh, that's pre-existing at ACS already. Um, so it really provides um, the best of all worlds in terms of real-time C pre-existing capability and um, stages like the V308 at, at PI. So in the final summary for the applications we work with and this new ACS real-time C capability, um, what it's bringing to PI is really this extra layer of computational efficiency that we require in these applications with signals that need to go through computation to be optimized in terms of motion, algorithmic flexibility, so we can use these real-time C 
uh, functions down on the controller that would otherwise be constrained, um, potentially in a buffer approach. And perhaps most importantly, for advanced developments that have occurred to address these different technologies at PI, proprietary and secured. So in close, I want to thank all of you for listening uh, to our talk today.